Hey guys, Ms. Peterson here, and welcome to AP Chemistry Lecture 6-4, all about Hess's Law. In this lecture, sorry about that, um, in this lecture we will be learning about Hess's Law, um, and this will be our last lecture of Unit 6, so we'll be doing a summary of all of the different ways that we can determine the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction. So, what is Hess's Law? Um, Hess's law states that if a reaction can be described as a series of steps, then the delta H for that reaction can be found by just the sum of the enthalpies of each of the steps. And this makes sense. Like we've said before, enthalpy um, change is a state function, meaning all that matters is the initial state and the final state, not the path that you took to get there. So any series of state that gets you from the same initial to final place is going to give you the correct enthalpy change. Now, we will be manipulating equations in order to solve problems like this. And there's a couple things that we need to remember. If we flip around the equation, we need to change the sign of the enthalpy value. Makes sense. If in the forward reaction, energy is being released, in the reverse reaction, that same energy must be absorbed. So we're just flipping the sign on that one. Same thing with um, if we have to multiply an equation by an integer to get it to work out then we should also multiply the delta H value by that same integer. And just make sure that all of our immediates cancel, and if we're able to do that, then we can just sum up the steps just as they are. But this is gonna be clear to see in an example, so let's go for it. So we have two elementary reactions. We have carbon solid reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide, and we have carbon monoxide reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide. Um, these are both kind of written as formation reactions, um, or the second one isn't, I lied. It just has that one half um, thing on it, uh, coefficient. So if we want to look at this reaction, okay, well, we have to get there from our other two. Starting with this first one, okay, I need that carbon solid, and there it is in that one but the coefficient is different. So when I write that reaction, and the delta H value for that reaction, okay, in order to get it to the target, I know I'm gonna have to multiply the whole thing by two. So I'm gonna multiply the whole reaction by two, and multiply the delta H value by two, which gives me the new delta H value of 787, negative 787 kilojoules, okay? So now I want to produce carbon dioxide, but carbon dioxide is a reactant in my second elementary reaction. That means first that I'm going to have to flip that reaction, and also it has this coefficient of two. So I'm gonna to have to flip it and multiply it by two. So let's start with the flipping of it. I will have CO2 decomposing into carbon monoxide and one half of oxygen gas, okay? That has a given delta H value. When I flip it, I have to flip the sign, so it'll be positive 283.0. But then I'm gonna have to multiply it by two. And I'm just gonna clean this up and actually write the number over here, but you guys know where it came from. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to multiply it by two, so I'm going to multiply the whole reaction by two. 2 times a half is 1, so we can get rid of it there. And then I'm going to multiply that number by 2. 283 times 2. And I get 566. Okay. So I flipped the reaction. I flipped the sign. I multiplied it by 2. I multiplied that number by 2. And so now let's check and see if this works out. Okay. I have these two carbon dioxides canceling out with the two carbon dioxides there. I have one oxygen gas canceling out with just one of them, 
which makes sense because in my final reaction, I have two carbon plus one oxygen gas forming two carbon monoxide. And it matches up with my target. So then I just add these up. Okay. Negative 787 plus 566 gives me negative 221 kilojoules as the delta H value for that reaction. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's do another example. This one, we have three steps, so it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay. It is a similar reaction. We are starting with that carbon solid. Okay. It has that one-to-one, -one, so I'm going to leave that reaction as it is. Just to make writing it simpler, I'm going to omit the um, state functions. The solid liquid gas, I mean. Okay, so now that one's used. I'm going to ignore it so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, now let's see. I need one of my products to be carbon monoxide, which shows up right here. So when I write that reaction, I know I'm going to have to flip it. So I have 2CO2 reacting to 2CO plus O2. With a delta H value, I flipped the reaction. So I'm going to have to flip the sign. It'll be positive 5 to 66 kilojoules. But also, note, I need to change that um, coefficient. Okay? This time, I'm going to be dividing the whole reaction by 2. 2 divided by 2 cancels the 2 out there. 2 divided by 2 cancels it out there. And this one becomes, let me go ahead and move that over so we can see it a little clearer, one-half O2, okay? And since I divided my reaction by 2, I'm going to need to divide this by 2, okay? And that gives me 283. Okay, so now we have that step taken care of. Let's look at this last one. Okay, this is another one. We're going to have to flip and divide by two. So first, let's go ahead and write the reaction. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it and divide by two um, as we go. So we have H2O going to H2 and another one half O2. With that delta H, okay, have to flip it and divide by two. So it'll be positive 241.8 kilojoules. Okay, I think we have it, but we need to check and make sure that it does all add up correctly. So let's go through it and double check our numbers. Okay, we have this O2 here, one, and then we have two halves. So that O2 is going to cancel out. We have carbon dioxide there and carbon dioxide there. So that cancels out. And I think that is it. Leaving our final reaction, carbon plus water goes to carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. So yes, our reactions do add up to what we want. So then we just sum the enthalpy values, okay? Negative 393.5 plus 283 plus 241.8. And we get to delta H value of 131.3 kilojoules, okay? Now, I did want to show you a, another method and way that you could write this out. Um, because some people for, prefer to do these algebraically, okay? It is still a similar way that we did it. But say we wanted to look at the delta H for this reaction, okay? We use the first one just as it was because it's that one-to-one. -one. So we have delta H1, okay? For this one, we flipped it and divided by 2. So we have negative... Delta H2 
divided by 2. Okay, for the last one, we also flipped it and divided by 2 to get that H2 to where we wanted it to be. So, plus negative delta H3 over 2. Okay, and sometimes you will see um, equations or functions like this written as a multiple choice option rather than having you do the math. So, I do think it is good to see where those come from. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Just making sure that I, yep, everything is flipped and we're good to go. Okay, we have one more. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. And then I'll show you guys the answer in a sec. Did you get negative 304.1 kilojoules? If so, you are good to go. Okay, so for this first reaction, I left it the same. Okay, for this second one, all I had to do was flip it. And then for this one, okay, I wanted that O to be on the reactant, so I had to flip it and divide by 2. To that get that coefficient of 1 on the oxygen. So then you can see I have the one half O2 and then the O2 there. That's what cancels out the one and a half O2 over there. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So that's all of the methods that we use to find the enthalpy change for a reaction. I have them summed up in this nice little table for you. Okay. We have the two calorimetry methods, okay? One, coffee cup calorimetry, where we measure the heat absorbed or released by the water, and the one where we just use the calorimeter itself, okay? We can use stoichiometry to convert from kilojoules to moles to just kilojoules for a specific amount. No real equation to go with that one, just using that stoichiometry. We can use the bond enthalpies by looking at the bonds broken minus the bonds form. We can use the heats of formation for the products minus the reactants, and we can use Hess's law. Now, I highly recommend you to go back in your notes and put a screenshot or um, a little like mock-up of an example problem for each of these methods, just so you guys can see those connections. But that's it for today's lecture and at unit six on thermodynamics. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.